So let's see some examples of conjectures uh, that look good, but we're needing to find a single counterexample where it fails. So let's start off with this first one. If x squared is greater than x, then x is greater than 1. OK, that's, it sounds very clever, OK? So it just sounds like it should be mathematically correct. But clearly, there is an example where this doesn't work, OK? So how about if we consider um, a few sample numbers, OK? So let's think about this. So if we try some x's, and we try some x squareds. Let's put them there. OK. So if we try uh, x is 2, then 2 squared is 4. OK. And clearly uh, x is greater than 1 here. OK. Well, that seems to be OK. Um, if we start with x being 1, well, clearly this isn't going to work because now we've got x squared is not greater than 1. So we can't really use that one. So if we tried uh, 0.1, well, 0.1 is 0.01. But in this case, you can see x squared isn't greater than x. So we can't use that one either. Okay? So we can't go into uh, those decimals between 0 and 1. We can't use 1. How about if we go into negative numbers? So if I try minus 2, um, then x squared is 4 still, because minus 2 squared is 4. 4 is greater than minus 2, so that's correct. That works. But x is not greater than 1. Minus 2 is not greater than 1 here. So we found an example. Okay, We found a single example where x equals minus 2 where this statement is true, but that statement is false. So it's like a logical consequence that they're trying to formulate here. They're trying to show that if that's true, then that's true. But we can show one example where clearly it doesn't work. OK? So because there's that one example, this logical consequence isn't true. It doesn't work. So we have, that is a disproof by counterexample. How about this next one? If n is prime, then n squared plus n plus 1 is prime. Well, let's go with a little table again. Tables are good. Okay. So if we try some values of n, n remember has to be prime. So if we try n is 2, we get 2 squared plus 2 plus 1. So 4, 6, 7. Seven's prime. So it works there. So if n is 3, we get 9, 12, 13. 13 is prime, so that's OK. We're not going to try 4 because 4 is not prime, so we'll move on to 5. 25, 30, 31. 31 is prime. OK, so that works. Next prime is 7. So we get 49, 56, 57. Ah, now is 57 prime? Well, no, it's not, because 57 is 3 times 19. So if n is 7, this statement, number 2, fails. OK, so we found a single counterexample where um, the conjecture number 2 fails. OK, so the last one says the sum of n consecutive integers is divisible by n, where n is a positive integer. OK, so what does that mean? Well, if I have then four consecutive integers, we'd be saying that it is divisible by four. OK, so let's try that, shall we? Shall we try... Uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. OK? So here are four consecutive integers. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10. But 10 is not 
divisible by 4. So, there. That was very quick. One example where number 3 fails. Okay? So, I found four consecutive integers that where I added them together, I don't get a number that's divisible by 4. Okay? So, with these... This proof by counterexample, you're looking for one single example where it failed. You don't need to find more than that, just one is all you need.